Hey, greetings. It's Susie Q with another automatic written piece, Akashic Records, and something happened. So we're doing it backwards there. So anyway, so um, so this written piece that I did was back in 2008. And um, I think a lot of people kind of relate to 2008, especially if you were real estate brokers or loan officers or whatever. It was kind of an epic stinker time. So I know exactly what happened was the 2008 kind of like, you know, it, it just everything was failing with me. You know, I had a bunch of land deals that were in escrow and most of them were through shares of stock and then it was gone. So everything was like, it just was a bummer. It was like a super duper freaking stinking bummer. <laughs> now I can laugh about it. And so I've got my written piece, an automatic written piece, and then we'll be looking at a companion piece, which is uh, Derek, the work of Derek Walcott. And he uh, did had a Nobel Prize with literature uh, back in 1992. He's already passed, and we share the same birthday. So I'm really giving a lot of you know props up for uh, Derek Walcott because I don't know, I don't remember. I had written this piece, and then eventually I found. Um, a complimentary piece through Derek Walcott, and I can't really even remember how that got connected with me, but I just absolutely love uh, all of his work, uh, completely just, ad just admire all of his juicy, juicy work. All right, so this is my per first piece, and then you'll have the master's piece at the end. <laughs> all right, so uh, she thought it was by accident. Day by day, a change occurred, it was as if, as she walked along, a piece of her fell away. With each new sunset, she found there was less of her. As days passed, a heightened sense crept in. Instinctively, she knew she was different. What it was that caused this event? Was it something she tried to do and create? If by chance this was a metamorphosis? What then, what, what would she become? Months go by, still no answers. More questions come to her mind. Uncertainty, confusion, anxiety, frustration manifested in her new existence. If it was that pieces of her were meant to fall away, then what would be left of her? A shell? If the shell was all that was left, what kept it alive? Could it be that all that was left was her heart, her tender, porous, wanting feeling, in some ways had been forgotten? Standing naked, she looked into the mirror, and calm and knowing, she found she was there. All right. All right, so this next piece is from Derek Walcott. It's called Love After Love. Uh, inspired by the beautiful words of Derek Walcott and Love After Love, he and I share the same birthday on January 23rd. So I love this beautiful poet. Um, so again, it, his uh, piece is a Love After Love. The time will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door and in your own mirror. And each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back to your heart, to yourself, to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life whom you've ignored. For another who knows you by heart, take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes, Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit, feast on your life. All right. Yes. Yeah, so that's Derek Walcott's piece. And so when we're looking at some of these beautiful energies right now with this, you know, these companion pieces and it's like Derek Walcott. I don't know. Um, this, was, this was a really interesting time in my existence when I started doing the automatic writing and then back in the first day of 2008, I was working with a poetry forum and it was all a uh, new material, all um, pretty spectacular. And so that initial piece that, that was my piece, right, um, was really just 
shedding, you know, shedding parts of our story, shedding parts of our consciousness or just shedding what else, what else can I do? At that point in 2008, it was a bummer, you know? Um, and then I started, you know, trying to reconcile, like, how do I do better when it's not the right time? I, I really couldn't find any better solutions. And eventually over time, that written piece came through for me as an automatic writing piece via the Akashic Records, via the 2008 real estate stuff. So all of these things are conspiring to assist us. And the more that we can go deeper with some of these insights, you know, let's just say it was a, you know, it was like a wipeout. Yeah, like a, like a financial wipeout, you know. Um, but then you start looking at um, processing a person's life, processing the stories of their lives, and and looking back at time, you know, because now it's like it's like 223 and that was 2008. And so with retrospect and more deeper understanding about lessons in life and divine purposes, we get more guidance coming through. And so some of these written pieces are so rich and so um, spectacular. And and even if the words aren't exactly right, or maybe I, you know, it's maybe the not, 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 not maybe it may not be exactly right for you, but but when we're able to go in and get more guidance from a higher state of being or or through our Akashic records, we get more guidance. And I really acknowledge myself for keeping all of these written materials. I've had them for years, you know, I've had them for years. And, and even when I had, um, so back in 2013, I had to get a new computer and the old computer was gone. And so, but, but I always, whenever I'm working with the written pieces, I put, keep putting them in on Gmail so I could always look and see where am I at with my written pieces. So all of this uh, curiosity about life and about understanding and manifesting and creating and finding the finding the ups, the ups and the downs of life is that over time, when we start like kind of like accessing uh, more states of consciousness, we start going into these higher frequencies. And as we're working with these higher frequencies, we find more, uh, we find more um, kind of compassion for some of the oops, you know, the oops days, you know, those oops, days, like 2008 was definitely an oopsie poopsie day, you know, so, but we start working with that beautiful state of awareness that as time goes by, we feel lighter, softer, and more um, curious about what's next. And so with some of these ups and downs in the markets and some of these other ways of looking at life, we just really focus on what is real right now. And so what is real right now is I'm here. This is my office space. The day bed's over there where I do my sessions. This is where I do my videos. <laughs> and then I just noticed that I'm alive. I feel comfortable in my space. Um, I'm relating to the air that I breathe. I'm really working with prana, life force energy, breathing in and then breathing out, breathing in and breathing out. So when any of these things start coming up that's strange and different and maybe you're frustrated or you've got different, you know, things that you're working with is that you know that you can take a moment and just be present to what is, I call it the Iman energy, the eternal moment of now. And in that Iman energy, the eternal moment of now, we can just simply be still. We could be awake. We can be present to what is. And we just simply breathe, breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. <laughs> so the work of Derek Wilcott, um, I can't remember how I found him or he found me. I don't know. It was just a wild, um, kind of amazing event because I had just written that piece where I was kind of, everything was falling apart, right? And then I finally came back, back up into my body and I realized that this is my, this is me, this is me right now. And even though it was me back in 2008, you know, in 2023, me is like going, wow, she did it. You know, she really, she really did whatever she had to do when things were kind of like, you know, kind of different. So when we're, we're, we're looking at that work of Derek Wilcott, I really admire and 
honor him with the beautiful uh, work that he did in his lifetime. And I'm so, um, so excited, you know, to share these two companions because when I was doing the poetry forums, I would have my piece and then I would have, um, then I would, I guess, eventually found Derek Wal uh, Walcott's uh, Love After Love. And all of these things are so precious. I absolutely love it. Even all the stories of my life that some were stinker times and then, you know, maybe it was a glorious time, but and, and all the times that we have is we have that idea of presence, you know, that um, so if you feel sad, feel sad, you know, if you feel happy, feel happy, or you could just be, you can just be. And sometimes what we call uh, the beingness, it could be ineffable, or it just is. So we look at that just the just is. So whatever you're experiencing now, it just is, and then in another moment, working with the Iman energy, there might be another event, which is, is, you know, it just is or ineffable. So all of these states of consciousness are helping us. Like sometimes we're like, oh God, it was a mess, you know, and then you go, oh, like maybe a day or two after that, you kind of forgot what the story was. Those things can happen just like that, like clockwork, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. So I think that's it for now. We'll see you soon and a namaste. <laughs>